Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video. I have so much to share with all of you after being away for one week. Anyway, major indices rallied towards the end of last week and ended a three-week losing streak. But before we get too happy, some may wonder is this the way the big players play their game by bringing up the stock market before the key CPI report and FOMC meeting. Is this a classic buy the rumor and sell the news? In this video, I am going to share a little bit on the upcoming CPI report, the macro environment, and also share about one company that I have bought last week. To add on, I will also briefly touch on my recent option trades. So the stock market welcomed a nice rally last week after various equities had a steep fall since it hit a recent high in August. The rally for US dollars also ran out of steam, which is a good thing for the stock market. At this point, it seems like positivity and optimism are coming back to the market, probably because investors are anticipating that inflation will continue to come down. Looking ahead, the next key event is definitely the report of August Consumer Price Index aka CPI on 13 September. There are forecasts that suggest August CPI has dropped slightly on a monthly basis, mainly because gasoline prices have fallen sharply last month. Despite the potential drop in CPI number, many institutions and experts are anticipating a third 75 basis point rate hike, similar to June and July's increases. In case you are wondering why would the Fed still want to be aggressive in the rate hike if there is a drop in CPI number. So here are the two reasons. Number one, the Fed will definitely look beyond the main CPI number and assess trends in the sub-components such as food and housing costs. If these are still rising sharply, then the Fed will be very hesitant to dial back on interest rate hikes regardless how good the CPI number may look. Reason number two, Jerome Powell has shared that the Fed is unlikely to ease up on rate hikes until the job is done, aka they need to be very confident that US inflation is well under control before scaling back on interest rate hikes. Here's what he has mentioned previously. History cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. And to add on, James Villard from Fed also shared even if the upcoming CPI number reveals progress on inflation, it likely won't make a difference in the Fed's decision on rate hike, and he is leaning more strongly towards 75 basis point at this time. Once again, gentle reminder and for everyone's info, the Fed will convene on 20th and 21st September. But before that, Tuesday's big inflation report could well determine whether this market rally continues to the FOMC meeting. Finally, another reminder, this month of September will see the Federal Reserve accelerates the quantitative tightening, aka taking money and liquidity away from the economy, which will likely have a negative impact on the stock market. Okay, before I move on, some quick words. I'm doing all this for free, so if you found some value in my video, I hope you can at least help me in reaching out to more viewers by hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Alright, let's move on to the technical segment and start things off with SPY. On Friday, it closed above the 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level, which should act as a support now at 405. The next immediate resistance is actually where it is currently at, around 407, marked by the red dotted downward trend line. To note, it failed to break out of this trend line on two other occasions. So let's say it manages to break above this line, the next resistance level is 413, followed by the 50% Fibonacci level at 419. If we can hit 419, SPY will likely close the gap between 419 to 421. And when this happens, sellers may potentially step in and we may have a little pullback. In order for SPY to turn bullish, it needs to reclaim the 200 moving average, which currently stands at 424. To highlight, the last time round we tested the 200 moving average was during August high, where SPY got rejected and plummeted, so just be a bit more careful. So, if the market wants to rally after the CPI report, we do have a fair bit of room to run from the current 406 to 419, or even 424. Watch out for the price movement after CPI report. If market makers want it to go up, and if you have call options, you could likely profit. But please note that this is not a financial advice. On the downside, there is a gap between 400 to 402. This is why I don't quite like this current rally. Typically, this kind of gap and go will have a high probability of pullback to have the gap filled. 
though it may not always happen. Interestingly, 15 movie average is actually sitting in the gap at 402, so Boost will have to defend this 400 to 402 area to keep the rally going. Otherwise, watch out for 389, the 23.6 Fibonacci retracement level, where we had a nice bounce off that price level last week. And that is how support level works. Moving on to Apple, Apple seems a little weak when compared to other tech stocks. Personally, I would want Apple to take the lead if we are going for a bull run, because I cannot imagine institutions switching from a risk-adverse mode to a risk-on mode without loading up the bigger player Apple. Anyway, the two immediate tests for Apple are 157 and 160, where the 50 and 200 moving average are respectively. If we can climb above and close above 160, we could very well likely hit the 61.8 Fibonacci level, followed by filling the gap at 162 to 163. From there, sellers could start stepping in, and bulls will want to defend 160 and 161 to unlock more upside to the high of 160s. On the downside, keep an eye on 155 followed by 149. I will be excited if Apple goes below 150 again, and I would want to load up more shares at 140's range. Okay, next, Tesla. Tesla is currently looking quite bullish as it breaks out of the falling wedge marked by the two red lines, and it also closed above the 200 moving average which currently stands at 295. But do note that Tesla is a very volatile stock, so for the upcoming week or so, keep a look out for this 200 moving average as I noticed that it went up on 3 occasions but couldn't stay above for long, and then it came back down again. So this will be the 4th time that Tesla is testing this resistance level in the last 1 month. 4th times a charm? Let's see. By the way, just to add on, do note that 200 moving average is a dynamic resistance, meaning to say it doesn't stay at 295 forever, it changes as the market moves. Next, to highlight, similar to SPY, Friday's green candle has created a gap up, and as we all know, 90% of these gaps tend to be closed or filled, though not always happen. So it's good to stay a little cautious that it may come down again between 289 to 291 after which we have a support at 285. To add on to Tesla's portion, just to share, I have sold a put contract on 1st September when Tesla touched the 50 moving average, and I was expecting some form of rebound from that support level. I was also quite conservative by choosing a very low strike price at 200. And I think I was rather lucky as I almost caught the top by selling a 270 premium. Quite an expensive put for buyers. Currently, the trade is looking quite good. Right now, I am thinking if I should close it to lock in the profits or let it expire. Moving on to Microsoft, this is the company that I bought recently at 253. Again, it was pure luck that I bought it near the recent bottom. Technical wise, Microsoft is looking not too bad as it created higher lows since we hit the low in June. At the moment, it seems like it is heading towards the gap at the top at around 267. The next resistance level is at 270. All in all, pay close attention to the range between 267 to 270 as this critical area is where the gap, the 50 moving average and the overhead resistance are. On the downside, as long as we don't go below the green trend line, we should be fine. Previously, I have also mentioned that Microsoft is consolidating between 240 to 270 and investors can consider adding a few shares if they want at the lower end of the consolidation zone which is around 240s or 250s, which I did step in. Next, Google. It is still following the zigzag pattern that I have mentioned in my last 2 or 3 videos. As per what I have shared, Google went down to fill the gap between 107 to 108, and there seemed to be some form of strong support at 105. Well, as expected, the stock rebounded as it kissed 105. So, if the broader market wants to go up after the CPI report, Google is very likely to continue its zigzag pattern up. The next resistance levels are 113 and 120, where the latter is the stronger one. But if the market wants to fall, then 105 should act as a support again. As previously shared, I have sold a put contract when Google kissed the support level at around 105 or 106. That is the level where I believe and expect Google to bounce. Similar to Tesla, right now, the trade is looking not too bad as well as Google bounced from the support level. Alright, some end thoughts to wrap up the video. 
With the latest rally, investors will be wondering if this is going to be a sustainable one, or will it be a dead cat bounce where a further plunge could pursue? Some other questions that investors are thinking would be has the inflation peak and is the market forward looking with this rally? Or is it a case of big players buying the rumour and then sell the news by dumping their equities when the CPI number is out or when the Fed announces their latest rate hike? In general, we have two boats of investors. The first group of investors are of the view that the bottom was in during June, especially when the recent pullback failed to go anywhere near June's low, which is a positive sign. On the other boat, some investors are thinking otherwise as they continue to throw in the usual macro factors such as high inflation, rate heights, quantitative tightening, geographical tensions, etc. And all this will continue to hurt the company's earnings and valuations. So who's right, who's wrong? Honestly, nobody knows and each has their own fair points. And in case viewers are curious and want to know my take, well, my take is I am sitting on the fence. Alright, I mean, say if someone really points a gun at me to force me for a view of the current market, my answer would be bearish. Yes, I'm still quite bearish of the market, but that being said, it doesn't mean that I don't believe the bottom was already in. There is some possibility that the bottom could well be in already as we hit a low in June. But to be frank, I try not to pick a side or spend too much time pondering over whether the bottom was in or not. My ultimate take or view is that the current market will likely remain choppy with significant pullbacks here and there, like the one we had recently. Personally, I really prefer keeping an open mind. In other words, despite feeling bearish towards the market, whenever there is an uptrend, I will ride along it. Who says bears cannot ride the bull's boat, and vice versa, right? Okay, all said, I think it's also good to remind ourselves that the US is currently still battling an inflation crisis, as well as the threat of a recession. We are still quite far off from the 2% inflation that the Fed wants to achieve. With this, my view is that the journey to the next bull market will take time, and it is usually a bumpy one with a series of pullbacks and recoveries. By now, investors should be aware that we are in a period of high volatility, and that it is impossible to time those pullbacks and rallies accurately. Therefore, it is best to stick to your investing plan regardless of what the market is doing. Stay on your course and dollar cost averaging or slowly dip your toes into the market in tranches as you work towards your long-term investment goals. Alright, to end this off, here's a question. Is the current rally trying to fight the Fed's fit heights or is it forward-looking by believing that the situation will improve in say, for example, 6 months time? I will leave you to think about it. If possible, please let me know your view in the comments section below. Alright, that's all for this video. If you have found some value in my content, please, please help to hit the like and subscribe buttons. They mean a lot to me and will keep me going. Thank you.